Hello, everybody! Oh, hello! Welcome back to Dungeons and Desktop. So, we're revisiting this fight a little bit. Oh, yep. I guess I should actually do things. Probably. Uh, it's, it's, Sometimes that helps when you're trying to is hard. do things. I agree with that. Um, so, we went back, we rested, we got camping supplies, I ignored the door upstairs. I'll deal with that at a later point. Yep. And we just came back here, and yeah. So, that was on the end of the last episode, right? We showed that yes. we went in and got in a fight, and we're like, ah! Yep. Okay. It was sad news. It was pretty sad. Uh, ooh, that's right. First levels are all good. I need to find, like, good thin bolts of lightning. Oh. Oh, they're dancing. I'd use this more. Good. Because it hits everybody. Oh Whoa, everybody came back here. Whoa, look at him go. Whoa, Aloth. He is not happy. Uh, let me do his cool thing. Yeah. Do that. And then I'll go have Durance. Uh, you know, use the first levels first. Those are per encounter. Yep. Yeah. I remembered that. I don't. Also, our little animat guy is up at the top just being like, I'm going to hang out with this barrel. He's just chilling. Oops. Well, whatever. I'm getting all my stuff screwed up. Come on, Aloth. There we go. Now you should get him away. Yep. I was going to actually buff a few things. Run away. He can't, he can't cast it. That guy's just floating. Yep, he is. Uh, why don't you stand? Apparently that's what happens when shadows get knocked away. Yeah, they just kind of float in the air. Yep. Oh, and then they dramatically float away. Man, Edder is holding his own. He's a pretty tough dude. You okay, Aloth? I'm cool, guys. It's me. I'm fine. I'm fine. My name's Aloth. <laughs> Willow's hanging out back there with her little hat. Yep. I'll zoom in more. It's cool to see them up close sometimes. Yeah. It's honestly a little bit easier for me to keep track of stuff. <laughs> okay. Depends on the battle, but yeah. did I just hear a page flip? Sounded like it. That was weird. No Whoops. Problem. Well, you have to remember also that I'm blind, so... If it's zoomed in, it helps me. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. We're poor. Yeah. So poor. Okay. Yep. So I don't think we've done anything up here. Okay. So let's get back to... Uh, Other than get attacked. Partying around. Woo! Party! I don't remember yet how far we did stuff up here. I think, we just, I think we had that fight. Aloth was like... Uh, the same shit happened to Aloth. He got gained yeah. by teleporting shadows. That's, so we went back to town. We could make some money off that, you know. Well, you. Yeah. I'm sure there's a fan fiction. Shadows there. don't have a lot of money. It's true. Uh, separated into distinct layers. Oh, it's always shitty when your compounds and fluids separate. I know. I hate when that happens. Oh, uh, it's like Alfredo mm, sauce. Meat! It's like what? Alfredo sauce. Like Alfredo sauce. That's why, like, Delicious. I, I love Alfredo sauce to death, but I, I rarely get it to go or, like, take home. Yeah. Or, or leftovers is what I mean. I yeah. It. Just because it always separates. Oh, mm -hmm. hey. Hey, stairs. Hello! It's a very, like, each, each floor is, like, just a couple rooms. Yeah. I guess it is a lighthouse, and honestly, this is still a still giant a huge interior. lighthouse. Yeah. Do you think we're gonna go up to the top, and then Booker's gonna be there? Oh, if only. That'd be awesome. Oh, Ooh. Bioshock. Oh, someone told us, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Mojo. Yep. That all of these books that we're getting end up at our library, so that's cool. Even the uh, evacuation notice. <laughs> no, that's weird. A deer and reinforcements advancing. Immediate evacuation of Honor's gift. Okay. I order that. of Duck Hadrit. And the lighthouse tower key. Good. Woo! Good that we found that. We probably would not have had to pick this door otherwise. Mm, maybe not. Well. Maybe. Oh, I guess she said it was only three floors, didn't she? So this uh, must be the so. top floor. Yeah. That's what I that heard. That would make sense because of math. Mm-hmm. I've heard of math. It sounds pretty that math adds terrible. Up. I hate math. I'm not a mathematician, but if the tower is three and we've got oh, two, out. then that's a creepy ghost lady. Yep. Lilith? I'm just going to sneak. She won't see me. No. I'm sure nothing bad can happen. Not at all. Oh, oh God. God! Shrieking sobs pierce your ears and rattle the musty rafters of the lighthouse. They emanate from the spectral figure of a woman hovering in the middle of the room. You know, like they do. Yeah. Uh, each heave of her shoulders unleashes another hair-raising wail. Hey, we need more perception. Dang it. Well? Uh, get closer? 
As you approach, the spirit's cries take on a threatening edge. Oh. The swirling mist around its leg, rip, uh, legs ripple with movement. The black oh, pits yeah. of its eyes level momentarily with yours. It's interesting the perception requirement dropped. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Sorry, I was trying to figure out the plurals. Oh, you know, hold on. I wonder if... Maybe we have this. So what's our what's our perception? God, I'm, I cannot get situated in my chair. <laughs> Good. Uh, normally it's 14. Okay, so we're like one away. So if we have like a buff, we can... I'm pretty sure we have a potion for perception. Oh, that'd be good. I'm pretty sure. That's sugar. Uh, or drugs, you know. Yeah. Is something. I wish I... I wish there was like a, a some way to tell like what these could do. Yeah, to it'd be cool if they were like color coded or had like a symbol on them or something. Oh, plus two perception. Sweet. So some black sun. So that'll get us to the second one, but the first one was 17. Wow, these last for 10 minutes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it'll get us to the second one. I think we just get closer and then we can see whatever it was, was we're missing. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, how do I... Oh, that's right, I have to put it in our quick slots. Uh, boop. Okay. Eh? Eh? Mmm, delicious. Nom, nom, nom. Okay. Mm. It's my favorite. So let's try this again. Favorite kind of drink. Oh. Get closer. Uh, okay. There we go. Serve! You're close enough to notice that the spirit's head is tilted back. Even as it loses blood-curdling howls, the faint movements of its head suggest that it's looking toward the windows and scanning the horizon. Uh, the Siangula's ghostly hands are stained with something dark. At first, you think it's blood, but it's as black as ink. Oh. Okay. Well, cool. Um, she seems friendly. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we'll search the room. Yeah. There you go. Ooh. I don't like that. It's spooky. Oh, there's a desk over here. I wonder if she wrote... Oh, is that her body? I don't know. You should ask it. Uh, Lilith, Lilith Shawl. Oh, of Perception plus three. Hey. Oh, just need a Perception. Cloak feels so light, it's easy to forget you're wearing it. Um, you found this in the Lighthouse of Andra's Gift. Tower been uninhabited for a century and a half, and its last occupant, the Lighthouse Keeper, supposedly died there with the endurance herself. When the Adirans invaded. Whoops. It was rumored her spirit haunted the tower still, watching for ships on the horizon. That sounds like a dumb rumor. I don't believe it. That's cool. Who believes in that kind of stuff? Oh, and there's more stairs. Yeah. I guess they go up They are brokey broke, though. Tippy top. Huh? How are they brokey broke? Look at them on the right, oh, right side. There. Yeah. They're, like, completely smashed. God, I was just thinking of, like, a <laughs> spiral, but it was hard what to What do you mean? You can't walk up those. What's that? And, oh, Whoa. God, the Deerwood Part 3. Oh, jeez. Hey, chest. TLDR. Oh, that's... That, wow, very high lock. Oh, my goodness. Oh, come on, Grieve Mom. Level Logbook. up again. Spells a thick plume of dust. Um, on the 6th, foggy, port full, 158 days, inciting the Red Dream. What? 12th, heavy rain, two fishing boats lost at sea. 164 days, inciting the Red Dream. Daring ships on horizon, 173 days since sighting the Red Dream. I wonder if that's the ship she's waiting for. Oh, Maybe. That, I wonder if that's why that thing happened. The uh, person was also see. tracking the appearance of a ship called the Red Dream. Naya? Yeah. The girl that told us to look into this. Can okay. talk to her again? No. no. Back away. Okay, so we should go talk to Nia. Yes. Oh, oh let's break in here. Sure, why not? All right. Oh god, we have a lot more lockpicks oh, than we did. Fuck yeah. What you ask is done. Whoa. Jack of Wide Waters. That's, That's cool. really cool. A fan like of Alma Swashbuckler. Oh. So it's twelve DR. That is really good for only twenty percent. And plus two survival. Damn. Okay, someone Damn girl! I think someone's gonna wear that. Yep. Uh is it gonna be us? Oh no, we got the cool new like druidy thing. Yeah. Although it's actually kind of better than it. Huh? It's like, it's a 12 DR instead of 9. You should compare people and see who it would work with best, I guess. He's still got, sh you know what? He's, He's had shitty. shitty armor for a long time. And he gets attacked a lot. This does give him plus 2 lore, but nah, he needs it more. Do it. Oh man, look how fancy he is. It's a different look for sure. Yep. Uh, I guess we'll enchant it with so we can give it the, um, Plus two int back. Yeah. Oh, or just plus one. What do we oh, plus two? no. Oh, a oh, diamond. Where do we get those? And we find them every Have we seen those before? 
Yeah, I'm pretty oh. sure we have. I'll just get it once now. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's talk to that lady. I'm gonna fast forward. Come on, tiny guy. Tiny Tim. That's his name, right? Tiny Tim? Yep. I thought his his name was um Anna Matthew. Matthew Anna Matthew, yeah. Well his name is Timothy Anna Matthew. Oh, that's his full name? Yes. What's his middle name? Something. Timothy something Anna Matthew. Yes. His parents It's a beautiful name did not like him. <laughs> oh. I encountered someone today like a a customer that they had the same first and last name and I thought that that would be very upsetting to live with. What? <laughs> well, I don't want to say it because I okay. don't know, for sure. privacy reasons. Did it at least make sense like it was a name that no. could be used for both? Nope. No. Okay. It was just the same name twice. Matt Matt. Yeah. Blake Blake. Yeah. It John was, John. It was weird. But the, I just like I'm not sure what kind of like I feel bad saying this because I'm sure they're like what if someone's listening and they're like, "Hey, What's my mine? name is first name first name." <laughs> but like I just feel like if you're a parent, why like do you not think of that or you're like, "That's cool." <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Uh, anyway, have you heard about the Red Dream? Who hasn't? That ship's been running raids for decades now. Used to stop in New Hayomar, laden with spoils from Rautide traders. These days, I hear she spends most of her time prowling the Deadfire Archipelago. Archipelago. Yeah, come on. Sorry. Naya points to a ship anchored in the distance. That's her! Oh, uh, it's here? Okay. When she's at port, her captain, an elf named Merowith, takes her shore leave over the charred barrel in Brackenberry. Uh, believe it or not, she likes her creature comforts. Uh, she shakes her head. That's what I'm talking about. When a pirate won't even set foot in the tavern on this side of town, it's high time for a new establishment. Maybe we should go talk to that captain. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, we could just kill the banshee, but I feel like it's going to be more satisfying to like. Well, it's kind of cool if you have an option to do something other than just smash things. Yes, it is. Unless you're a barbarian, and then you just smash everything. You just smash everything, mm -hmm. like the other game we've been playing, which yeah! we probably won't record just because I don't think people would like watching it too much. But but yeah, Diablo three. Yay! I started playing that the other night, and I smashed so many things. You do. Smash, smash, smash. All right. Uh, do we have anything else to do with Brackenberry? I guess we can go. Oh, we can turn that gem into the rich dude at the house. Or like uh, tell him. Oh that's yeah, one. I remember that. Remember we covered it from the thieves. Yeah. The thievers. Yeah, those mean guys that broke in and stole it. Yes. Those jerks. Yes. Hey, at least we didn't plan to do it. We just saw an open window and we're like, let's go exploring. I don't know what you're talking about. We never did anything. That's correct. Yes. Accurate. Yes. Don't go back to video number whatever. I have an is. alibi. We were at the salty mast all of that night that mm -hmm. it went missing. Mm -hmm. We had to get our masts very salty. In, um, have we been in, this, in over here? Um, it's this one, right? Yeah. I don't know, actually. What's it called? Uh, they said the name. Uh, Charred, Charred Barrel. Feral. I want to say we've been in here, but I, don't, remember, I honestly. don't know. Well, there's one way to find out, and that's to go in there. I just did that. What? Did you not? Were you not watching? I don't know what you're talking about. Am I supposed more? to be watching something? Yes! What? I keep telling you to get your head out of the beanbag chair and watch. I've been watching this paint dry. Oh, no, we have not been no, in here. No, we haven't. That's this is a fancy, fancy tavern. I like it. Thirstwin. Thirstwin. Thirstwin? Thirst yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Bro. Oh, that gets drunk. Heartless bitch. Hey, excuse me. The young elf is dressed in gaudy robes that seem ready that he seems ready to cast off. He picks up a heavily brocaded sleeve and continuously uh er, continually adjusts the gold chain around his neck. He looks up at you. Did she send you to run me out of town? You can tell her I'm not going anywhere without that medallion. You dick. I told Sarah I wouldn't let her sell it. If that's what you're here about, then save yourself the trouble. He puffs up his chest but glances at the exit. What's he talking about? Uh, we don't really know. Oh, that's option one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. If I were after you, you'd already be an oozing pulp under the table. <laughs> I love it. You know, I, want to go, I want to go back to this game and just, just nothing but the aggressive, most aggressive responses. That'd be great. Um, let's see. 
Luckily for you, today's my day off. I'm just here for a drink. He watches you and hesitates for several seconds. Finally, he gives a nervous chuckle. You had me for a moment. I wouldn't put a pastor to send someone like you, though. Sarah's a courtesan over at the salty mass in Andre's gift. We've been there. Yeah. Uh, we've been working together for over a year now. Probably still smell like it. What? I find a noble with more money than sense, fill him up with liquor, and send him her way. They have a good time, and Cyril takes her fee, and a little extra. You of all people know how it is. Oh, because we've been deceptive. Oh my god! A uh, hundred coppers here, a trinket there. It's a bounty for us, and these lords and ladies never notice anything missing. Okay. Okay. Go on. Anyway, we always split the bounty until a week ago. He squeezes his lips into a tight frown. She takes a necklace off some noble. It's an Inguithin medallion, damn near priceless. That relic is sacred to my clan, but she won't part with it for any sum I could afford. Let's see, and even if I wanted to, I can't go home without it. Eh. Uh. Dun dun dun. I was like a number three, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. I don't know. Do you want to do it? I don't care. It's your choice. Your character. Your willow. Oh my god. Let's see. Tell me more about your situation. What do you want to know? Uh, let's see. What makes this medallion so important to you? Uh, let's see. I grew up in Air Glanfoth with the Shattering Spear Clan. We Glanfothans have protected and within ruins for thousands of years. It's the one duty the gods ask of us in exchange for the freedom to live as we please. He fidgets with an emerald ring on his pinky. Uh. But treasure hunters looted the ruins in our territory and we left the wilds we dwelled in for generations. Ahead of my clanmates, most of my clanmates scattered to towns around the Deerwood and probably live on crusts of bread. Restoring this medallion to the ruins would earn us the gods' forgiveness. The Shattering Spear could go home. Mm. I'm not sure how I built by his entire story, yeah. but... Yeah, he has plenty of money. You seem like you've done well enough for yourself. It was this or scraped by in the gutters like the rest of my clan, but I'd give it all for that medallion. I offer to you, but it's worth more than anything I've gotten. Cyril knows it. I still don't understand why you can't take your money and return to Air Glenfoth. <sighs> That's because you're used to looking at things with detachment. A community isn't a place, it's a connection to history and meaning. Like an anchor, defending the ruins for the gods gave us a purpose. Without that, we're adrift. Does this make any sense to you? Yes. Okay. Then you know what it's like. How to care for something you can't explain. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Tell me about Cyril. She's a courtesan, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't born to much, but she's done what she has to in order to escape that. In case he keeps gazing at all his jewelry. Yeah, I know. She's a good friend. Without her, I'd probably be living hand to mouth like the rest of the Shattering Spear. But this isn't about her or me. It's about the 40 people in my clan and the way of life we've held to for generations. Okay. Um, I guess we could try to help him out. Yeah. I can't really judge him for stealing, considering how much we've right, stolen. Right, yeah. I'll see Bucket in the medallion. You'll find her at the Salty Mast. The only way anyone sees her these days is by paying, so you'll have to go through Maya. You're persuasive enough you might be able to show her my side of things, but whatever you do, please don't hurt her. Okay. Cool. But we're busy with the other quests, Yep. So. You're a noble. That's You're a table. Noble. That's a table. Uh, with some cocoa. Okay, There's good. an understudy. Who just goes into a, a pub and's like, ooh, look at this cocoa on the table. Yoink. Uh, I guess thieves. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's a basement. Oh, damn it, cook. Can't steal all your stuff. I go down there. I guess. I'm trying to find the pirate, right? Right. I'm not sure where he'd be. It's guess, a she, actually. Oh, is it was a she? She said, yeah, she takes her shore leave at blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're right. Um, uh, I don't think she mentioned the name, She's though. She's probably so. upstairs. Hey, what now? guys. How's it going? Yeah. Would you like to meet our tiny anima? Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, then. We'll just take this grain and, yep, and be, be on away. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that was glad we went down there. It's like when you're trying to find a table at like a restaurant, and I there's think like, we just walked in on another side quest. Yep. It's when you were trying to find a table and you walk into like another room and you're oh, just like, uh, there's like this a private is full. meeting going yeah, on. Yeah, like, sorry. Uh, bye. <laughs> 
I didn't realize there were other humans. Oh, okay. Hopefully he's up, uh, she's upstairs. <gasps> Just think, because pirate, that it's a guy. Ladies can be awesome pirates. They can be. They can. They've got the booty. But um. Wow. I think I found her. There's a pirate there. No, that can't be it. Was Merwith her name? Yes, it was. She did mention a name. And the name was Merwith. Well, Merith watches you through coal-rimmed uh, eyes. She uh, puts her hand on the hilt of her blade, jingling the jewels me. that hang from her wrist. I'm not looking for trouble. You can tell the knights I'm just here for a drink. If I want a company, I'd go to the Salty Mast. What is it this time? Let's see. Someone at the old lighthouse in Andre's Gift was looking for your ship. There's pain in her mind, Watcher. The pain of a child's abandonment. It never goes away. Hmm. I didn't peg you for a liar. At least not from what I've heard. Huh. But that don't mean I believe you. You better explain what gave you such an interesting notion. Let's see. The last lighthouse keeper watched your ship, uh, watched for your ship every day. It's all in the log. No, oh, her snarls flashed the gold tooth. She turned me out. We are poorer than the fishermen who live there now. And when she learned I'd put up food on our table with stolen coins, she told me that if she never saw me again, it'd be the mercy of the gods. I had nowhere else to go. And it was a rough life until I rose to captain. Let's see. Uh, she ignored the Adir in advance to stay behind. I think she was waiting for you. She turns her eyes away. She was always so stubborn. I forget sometimes where I got it. She gulps down the rest of her wine. I'll go. Perhaps I'll give both of us some peace. It's her mom. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, it said abandoned child. It sounds child, like, yeah, so. abandoned child. Oh, she just left her crew here. They're like, whoa, our captain disappeared. I've had right. too much to drink. <laughs> I guess I'll head back. Yeah. See what's up. Oh, the Wailing Banshee. Yeah, hopefully it ends nicely and not like the Witcher quest that was similar. Banshees have always freaked me out because when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of Darby O'Gill and the Little People. I think you've told me this. Good. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you watch it now. First of all, number one, young ass Sean Connery singing. Awesome. Of course. Two, Leprechauns. Three, it's like old, so it's all pretty, you know, like crappy. Is that the one where it has the scene of the guy like opening his door and then like the howling banshee? Like, yeah, comes? like the like death's carriage like Did rides we... up. I think it's in the one of the nostalgic. Yeah, movies. I was about to yeah. say it was in like his top eleven like scariest yeah. moments. Or I know something. that we watched that because I was like, I remember that scene and it made me so scared. Where am I going? Am yeah, going? it's it's pretty old, so I mean the effects aren't great, but it's still pretty terrifying. So. Yeah. At least it was when I was a kid. I haven't watched it in a really long Something time. Something about the atmosphere he was saying, yeah. I guess. I have the DVD. We should probably watch it every day. Well, okay. That and the other dozen movies you want to watch. Yep. I like movies. There's a lot I of studied movies. them. You did. Turns out. You still do. That's not true. What are you talking about? You don't study them when you watch them? You just let, let this breeze I go by to sleep when I watch them. In one them. eye and out the other. What? <laughs> ah! <laughs> My eyes! Whoa. Well, one of my eyes is a projector. You didn't know that? It got foggy. It did get foggy. Okay, back to uh, her, I guess. Yeah! Let's go! We haven't bloody seen the um, House Domino thugs in a while. Mm. They attacked us twice, and then they gave up. Yep. Eh, they don't care anymore. We're too cool for them. Yeah, too cool for school. Pretty much. Speaking of school and young people and camps, how awesome was uh, the new show? Uh, what, Hot American Summer? Yeah. It was great! You'll never guess what happened! Oh, God. I was keeping an eye out for you, and who strolls down the dock but Mare with herself? She has seen the stairs she got. But she walks right into the lighthouse, never a word to anyone. And just when I'm sure she's met some awful fate in there, she strolls right out, still saying nothing to nobody. Now I'm hearing all sorts of rumors about Mare with and the last lighthouse keeper. I don't know what to believe, but everyone else around here is convinced the place is safe again. I've even got a construction crew ready to start work. Nice. And I know I've got you to thank. Here, this is for you. Come back when the renovations are done. I've got big plans for this place. Hmm. That's cool. I still want to go inside. And yeah, see, like, I want to see what, here. like, what evidence is left behind. Yeah. There's just the dead ghost with a knife in her chest. <laughs> 
it. Wait, what? Yep. <laughs> okay. That's how phantasms work. Yeah, that makes all of the sense. I thought so. Thank Every you. sense that has Thank ever you. been, that made it. Whoa! Whoa! Um... What? <laughs> when the <laughs> renovations are complete, you should check it out. Oh, the, the renovations are complete. That was fucking fast. I'm inside now. <laughs> Can gather from, what the fuck just happened? from what just happened we talked to her and she said yeah come back when the renovations are complete and then we blacked out entirely <laughs> for like months yeah. or like for in time for the fastest construction crew ever to make this into an yeah inn. what the crap that's pretty great Oh, man, I thought we'd be like one of those things where like okay after the players have like waited a month you yeah can come back here. yeah no, nope. same day. No, nope. this is this is like better than Amazon. This is oh, oh, they're, they're still working going. on the upper floors. They're not that fast. Okay, God, I feel you guys now. are slow. Man, I hope we don't go up there and there's a banshee upstairs. Wow! Oh my gosh! That was pretty amazing. That was the fastest construction I've ever seen. Yeah, I think the place actually got bigger too. I don't remember it being as large yeah. as it was. Well, they renovated it. That's what... Oh God, no, the stairs. So, okay, well, we just never see that banshee again? Is the quest just done? I guess. All we had to do was convince her to come back to the lighthouse. Is it? Nope, it's dead. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, interesting. Well, then. Oh, how much time do we have left? Uh, like three, less than three minutes. Let's have a conversation. Um, so I think we, we realized this a long time ago, but and we totally forgot. But we can talk to our guys without them prompting us. We can! Who do you want to talk to first? Grieving Mom or Durance? I feel like they Grieving both mother. need things. Your mind comes bearing questions, Watcher. I had questions for you! Let your mind speak for you. I shall listen past the words. That doesn't make sense. And you're crazy. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, when we first met, how was I able to enter your dream? I do not know. What, what do you speak of? If you were in my thoughts, I could not feel your presence, nor do I know what you saw there. Oh. Oh. She speaks, you suddenly feel an odd sensation in your mind, as if walking in her thoughts would be as if, uh, would be. As if walking down a back street of merchant stalls. Yeah, that's just. As if walking in her thoughts would be as if walking down a back street of merchant stalls. I don't like stalls. the two as ifs. Yeah, I don't Sorry. Either. The claustrophobia of wooden shelves and canvas tarps made less oppressive by the sheer number of enticing vials and bottles that stretch out to the sides of you. You suddenly realize that whether she permits it or not, you could enter her dream and observe it without her ever knowing. And in response, your hand twitches. There's the feeling that you could simply pick up a vial, taste it, sample it, and keep the memory as your own. Whoa. And suddenly you find yourself back in her, your, present thoughts. Um, though you were away for but a moment. She seems unaware of your diversion of thought. It may be one of your gifts, an ability to walk in memories as easily as someone walks upon the ground. Wow. Interesting. Uh, let's see. May I try again? You feel her slowly nod, though she <laughs> makes no motion. I guess... And she's, we've heard her voice, but yeah. I, I think in reading into it, she, like, never speaks, does she? Well, can this they all, like, see her yet? Can we see her? What? Can they see her? I assume so. She's blown up many things with a shotgun. Well, no, I know, but, like, or, I mean, I don't see think others... her as she is. Because one of the questions was, why can't people see you? Oh. Remember? Well, and, like, she, when we first met her, she was like, you guys can see me? Or, like, you can see me? We'll have to go back to that, then. It's in the, like, main list of questions. Okay. I think it's just, like, that she's disguised. Anyway, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I do not want to impose. I seek your permission. My memory is not as it was. Much has been forgotten. If you would walk in my thoughts, I have nothing hidden. Her thoughts feel strangely apologetic and welcoming both at once. Perhaps you may learn something that will strengthen you, or a clue to what has caused this terrible burning of the fields of souls and halted Bareth's wheel. Her mind gives way, your passage almost unnoticed as you enter her as before. Crazy. Whoa. Circling the memory you shared when you first met. Suddenly you are calm. You're on a plateau, almost the height of a tower, several stories high. 
The plateau is like a table lying beneath a clear sky, and beneath the plateau, surrounding it in all directions, a forest, hazy with mist, although whether it is actual mist or distance or a recollection. Resting in the curve of a natural arch above you is a great copper bell, half again the size of a man, hanging out attention, as if looking down on you in the event unfolding before you. The plateau is soaked in the sun, and the rock beneath you is rough and warm. The sky forms a cradle around you. You feel different, not disembodied, but you feel your body, your physical contours have changed around the surroundings. And you hear a soft series of chimes, like wind chimes, at the sound the scene gains color and texture, as if the sound is beckoning you gently forth, filling your senses and thoughts, like mist roiling softly into a sealed chamber, and... Dingling! The chime coaxes you deeper into the memory, and you're certain it's a memory, a warm one. You're on the stone of the plateau, your knees on the warm texture of the ground, silver white, shimmering like Audra. The plateau is formed of it, glistening in the sun. You can feel the heat on your skin, your wrists, and your hands. Your hands are in motion. Weaving, not thread, but gathering, tenderly moving along the first movements of Barat's wheel. Your hands are wet, your hands are upon the flesh of a newborn child, and you can feel the crowning of a tiny head turning in your grip, its head slick wet from the wound. I think we read all this. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're reliving, right, I guess, the yeah. memory. The I didn't know if it was exactly, like, the same text. Yeah, should we just... Well, we'll focus, I guess, and okay. draw the child forth. Yeah, we've been through this. Okay... Uh, I guess we did that before. Chimes are intended to be welcome to the child. The woman laughs at the ragged joy. Okay. So yeah, we did, I All think. Right. Let's see. Okay. I walked in your dreams, thoughts, and I believe your memories. A mixture of curiosity and fear wells up between you. She raises her left hand, the chiming at her wrists, quelling the rise within her. She is frightened, but curiosity anchors her. And what did you see in my memories? I would hear you speak of them. Let's see. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. The dream, the memory I saw upon meeting you. It was you helping give birth to a child. There is silence, and as your breath falls still, you hear the faint cry of a child in the distance. A newborn child, almost exactly like what you heard in the dream. It's so cool. As you listen, the grieving mother raises both her hands, as if weaving, her wrists chiming as she does so. In a semblance of the gentle turning she provided while the newborn was crowning, to your surprise, you recognize the motions and the words from their memory, even as they are new to you. As she weaves her hands through the air in front of her, the child's cries grow still, yet the sound of the chimes weaves almost hypnotically into your thoughts. The sky seems sharp and clear, and you feel as if you are towering over your surroundings, as if kneeling atop a great pillar, just as she did in the memory. To your surprise, the grieving mother falls as if her strings were cut, and her knees crack oh. hard against the ground. Her hands never cease moving in the air, the chimes echoing her movements. In a ragged voice, you hear her speak. The voice is that of a much older woman than the one before you, harsh, almost desperate. Tell me what you saw. Show me what you saw. Where were you? Wow. Ooh, good thing we have intellect. That's crazy. Uh, let's see. Her eyes are filmed with silver white yeah. like Audra. Uh, let's <laughs> see. This seems the best one. Yeah. Okay, uh, it was the middle of a forest atop a great plateau. The sky was clear, mist blanketing the trees. As she kneels before you on the ground, she whispers to you, hoarsely and even fainter with the distance between you. The stone of the plateau. Its color. Tell me its color. Number two, it was Silver Audra, its surface warmed by the sun. As you watch her hands rise before her, she clasps them, then cups them as if feeling them for the first time, and she stares down at the cradle of her hands, and the chimes sound once, twice as they swing with the movement. And what did these hands hold? Let's see. Uh... I think it's this one. Yeah. We're not a cypher, so I we can I know. Can't... I guess number three. There's a sudden intake of breath and then a release. Her eyes blur closed, forming into slits, but in the brief glimpse you have of her changing expression, the rippling pain in her features seems to have smoothed. She swallows once, twice, and then you feel her once again in your thoughts, the rasping husk of her voice swallowed and drawn within her. It was the birthing bell you saw. Has it been so long? forgotten so much. Oh. That's interesting. That's... But with the words comes a river of impulses, thoughts as if loose from a breaking dam. 
and as your mind wraps the impulses into words, you realize it's her muscles and her hardened thoughts relaxing and breathing again. There's such an intensity you almost want to step back from the flow, but you find the wave of impulses cause questions to flow to the surface. Among them is a name. Watcher. Mm. What is the birthing bell? It is a plateau formed of the spirit stone Aldra. At its top is set a great bell cradled in the reaching arm of the plateau. It stirs in the wind, and it sounds for leagues when struck by Cape Hands. In distant times, the great bell served as a Glomfothan watchtower, perhaps. Why they abandoned it, I do not know. Other men came in time, settlements, and claimed the tower as their own. I, in turn, claimed it from them. The pillar became a cradle where I could draw new souls into the world. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Where is the birthing bell? It lies deep in the great forest of the Deerwood at the borders of Glanfathen lands. Surrounding it, barely a town, not one you would find on any map, but it held an important place for those there, even if we were far from the beaten track. Small families, tied like a knot, joined at the wrists in mind and thought. All were welcomed, all had purpose. Uh, in your memory, were you helping a woman give birth? Yes. Okay. Yet, I believe you only saw a small part of the birthing ritual. It is not all in a moment, nor in a day. It is a journey of many years between the child, the mother, and I. Uh, there was much I could do to aid the mother. Some sought the physical comforts of ritual to say their thoughts, even Audra from the bell. Others would seek advice, words of counsel for the days ahead. I was able to provide draughts, tinctures, and a reading of the child's spirit, all the strength in the mother. Can you tell me about the birthing ritual? You know what, actually, we don't know how much uh, longer this is going, so why don't we... Yeah, and we're here. already, like, over time. <laughs> yeah, so we'll come back right here where we are now and continue this conversation. Okay! Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you next time!